Have you ever wondered how ancient civilizations traded goods, ideas and culture across thousands of kilometers? Well, have you ever heard of the Silk Road? Yes, the world's most legendary trade route was the epic ancient highway that connected China, Europe and everything in between. So join me today on a journey through time and across continents as we explore the epic history of the Silk Road. Hi, my name is Sebastian and you're watching 7 Facts. The Silk Road was a marvel of its time, a network of trade routes that stretched over thousands of kilometers connecting the East and West. For centuries, this ancient route served as a vital link between the diverse cultures of China, Central Asia, the Middle East and Europe. The Silk Road originated in China during the Han Dynasty, around 200 BC and continued for over 1500 years until the 14th century AD. While this road was named after the lucrative silk trade, it facilitated the exchange of many other commodities, including spices, tea, porcelain, jade and precious metals. But it also acted as a crucial conduit for cultural exchange, as ideas, technologies and religions were shared along its path. For instance, the Silk Road played a significant role in the development and spread of Buddhism, which spread from India to Central Asia and China. So, over time, this trade route became a symbol of the vibrant exchange between the East and the West. From bustling marketplaces in Xi'an to the desert oases of Central Asia and the ports of Constantinople, the Silk Road was a hub of commerce, innovation and cultural exchange. It's no wonder that it captured the imagination of generations and continues to inspire exploration and discovery today. There are many ways we can divide the Silk Road, but often you'll hear about the eastern, central and western portions. The eastern Silk Road was a vital trade route for both east and west, but particularly for China. At the time, silk was the most prized commodity in China and the production of it was a closely guarded secret for centuries. Chinese silk was in high demand in the West and was exchanged for precious metals such as gold and silver as well as other valuable goods like spices and ivory. But as merchants of various ethnic and religious backgrounds traveled up and down the road, they came in contact with other people, other goods, stories, ideas and legends. This is how this trade route transformed into something much more than just a means of trade. It served as a pathway for the exchange of cultures, ideas and religions between regions that would otherwise had never heard of each other. Buddhism, as I said, originated in India and was introduced to China through the Silk Road and flourished in the country, eventually becoming a major religion in China. Similarly, Confucianism, a philosophy developed in China, spread to the West along the same road, majorly influencing various aspects of life, including politics, ethics and education. But this wasn't the only way information traveled along the road. Chinese merchants were at one point joined by diplomats, who personally established diplomatic relations and promoted trade with neighboring countries. These influences went both ways. Chinese traders brought not only silk and other luxury goods but also tea, paper and gunpowder that reached all the way to the West, which I'm guessing I don't have to explain how significant of an impact they had on Western culture and power. The Central Silk Road was not only a trade route but also a true melting pot of cultures, languages and religions. It brought together merchants, scholars and travelers from many different parts of the world, creating a vibrant and diverse community. Along the route, cities like Samarkand and Bukhara in today's Uzbekistan emerged as major centers of trade and culture, attracting people from all over Central Asia. Samarkand emerged as a center for astronomy and mathematics, with its observatory becoming one of the most advanced in the world. Bukhara was known for its great libraries and institutions of Islamic scholarship. In this portion of the route, the Chinese, Persians and Europeans didn't clash but mixed and traded and they were joined of course by the local communities. As the Silk Road passed through some of the most rugged and inhospitable terrain on earth, caravans had to overcome many challenges including extreme weather conditions and hostile environments. 
To make the journey safer and more efficient, many innovations were made, such as the development of camel caravans and the establishment of way stations or caravan sarais. The Central Silk Road too played a crucial role in the transmission of ideas and technologies. Buddhism took this route to reach China, while Islamic civilizations flourished in Central Asia, influencing art, architecture and literature. The exchange of ideas and knowledge that occurred here contributed to the growth of science, medicine and philosophy. And I keep repeating this because many people don't seem to realize just how vital these exchanges were. There's a reason why for most of history the major powers of the world came from Europe and Asia and not Africa, the Americas or Australia. Hmm? Do you get it now? The Western Silk Road was the final portion of this mighty trade route and served as the cultural bridge that connected Europe to the far-flung Eastern civilizations. And here too, as goods were exchanged, ideas and beliefs were also shared. Greek and Roman culture, including their art, philosophy and science, spread along the route influencing the development of Central Asian and Chinese cultures. Yes, you heard correct the ancient Roman and Greek civilizations were in contact with the great Chinese dynasties of old. And of course, at the same time, Chinese innovations made their way to the West. The cities along the Western Silk Road became centers of learning and culture. West of Samarkand and Bukhara, you found places like Merv, Tabriz, Tehran, Baghdad, Cairo, Aleppo and Constantinople. These cities and others were for centuries hubs for trade and commerce, with their bustling bazaars and caravanserais, and also great centers of learning, with Baghdad becoming the greatest city along the entire Silk Road. This section also played a role in the spread of Christianity. Christian missionaries, such as the Nestorians and the Byzantines, used the route to travel to Central Asia and China, spreading their religion and establishing churches and communities. The Nestorians in particular, a nearly extinct branch of Eastern Christianity, had a strong presence in Central Asia and China and their influence can still be seen in the region today. Another religion, Manichaeism, that was once one of the main religions of the world, spread along the same Silk Road, from Iran all the way to China and Britannia. This religion was once one of the most influential and regarded Zoroaster, Gautama Buddha and Jesus, the prophets of the same god, and a 3rd century Parthian named Mani was the last of the prophets. Anyway, more about this in a future video. As sea trade routes began to develop and improve, the Silk Road began to lose its importance as a main artery for trade between the East and the West. The discovery of the Cape of Good Hope in the 15th century by the Portuguese provided an alternate route for trade between Europe and Asia, further diminishing the importance of the Silk Road. Another factor in its decline was the weakening of the Mongol Empire, which had facilitated trade and provided security for travelers along the route. As the empire weakened, the once safe trade routes became increasingly dangerous, with travelers becoming vulnerable to attacks by bandits and other marauders. The Black Death, a devastating pandemic that swept across Eurasia in the 14th century, also had a significant impact on the Silk Road. The disease not only reduced demand for goods, but also disrupted trade networks as many traders and merchants fell victim to the disease. Political instability in Central Asia and the Middle East also played a role in the decline of the Silk Road. The rise of the Ottoman and the Safavid empires in the 16th century, for example, contributed to the shifting of trade routes away from Central Asia. Despite its decline, the legacy of this road continued to influence and shape the cultures and societies along its route. The exchange of ideas, technologies and culture that had occurred had a profound impact on the development of the major civilizations and this legacy continued to live on even after the Silk Road had faded into history. In the 19th century, European explorers began to rediscover the Silk Road. This was a significant moment in the study of world history and archaeology. European explorers, adventurers and scholars began to travel to Central Asia seeking to uncover the secrets of the ancient trade route. One of the most famous travelers of the Silk Road was Marco Polo, a Venetian merchant who traveled to China along this route in the 13th century. 
His account of his journey, The Travels of Marco Polo, became a bestseller and helped to popularize the idea of the Silk Road in Europe. In the 19th century, European explorers began to use Polo's account as a guide for their own travels along the Silk Road. They sought to uncover the ancient cities and artifacts that lay buried beneath the sands of Central Asia. One of the most famous of these explorers was Aurel Steen, a British archaeologist who undertook several expeditions along the road in the early 20th century. He discovered thousands of ancient manuscripts, artworks and artifacts shedding new light on the history of the Silk Road and the cultures that flourished along its route. Other explorers during this time included Sven Hedin, a Swedish explorer who mapped the ancient trade route from China to the Mediterranean, and Nikolai Perzewalski, a Russian geographer who explored the deserts and mountains of Central Asia. All this excitement led to the appearance of romanticized versions of the Silk Road in literature, art and music, thus becoming once again a symbol of cultural exchange. Today, the Silk Road is continued to be celebrated as a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance and a symbol of human connection. During the 21st century, the Silk Road regained importance as countries sought to revive the ancient trade route for economic and political reasons. The Chinese government's Belt and Road Initiative, announced in 2013, seeks to revive and expand the old Silk Road through infrastructure development and economic cooperation with neighboring countries. The initiative aims to improve trade relations, infrastructure and investment along the route, promoting economic development and cultural exchange. In addition, the popularity of the Silk Road as a tourist destination has increased, with travelers seeking to explore the ancient cities, trade routes and cultural sites that once made up this legendary road. The incredible endeavor of the old Silk Road still represents a fascinating chapter in human history, where diverse cultures and civilizations were brought together initially through the exchange of goods, which developed into a conduit for the exchange of culture, technology and ideas. And all of this occurred across vast distances with people overcoming challenges such as language barriers, harsh climates and political upheavals. The merchants who traveled the Silk Road often faced perilous journeys encountering bandits, harsh terrains, unfamiliar cultures and unknown languages. But they persisted, driven by the promise of wealth, adventure and discovery. Today, the legacy of the Silk Road lives on, inspiring new generations to explore the world beyond their borders and to celebrate diversity and cultural exchange. The Silk Road remains a powerful symbol of the enduring human desire to connect and explore, and a source of fascination and inspiration. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. I do hope to see you next time. Bye.